सी आई टी एन सी आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास सेवन हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निधि सिंह इन द लास्ट सेशन वी टॉक अबाउट द चेंजिंग नेचर ऑफ द अर्थ एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट क्लास सेवन जोग्राफी टेक्स्ट बुक आर एनवायरमेंट एंड इन दैट chapter 4 that is air do you know our earth is surrounded by a huge blanket of air called atmosphere all living beings on this earth depend on the atmosphere for their survival this is because it provides us the air we breathe and protects us from the harmful effects of the sun's rays what will happen if this blanket of air disappears without this blanket of protection we would be baked alive by the heat of the sun during day and get frozen during night it is this mass of air that has made the temperature on the earth livable let us now try to understand what this atmosphere is made up of Did you know that the air we take in while breathing is actually a mixture of many gases? Nitrogen and oxygen are two gases which make up the bulk of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, helium, ozone, argon and hydrogen are found in lesser quantities. apart from these gases tiny dust particles are also present in the air now we will try to understand the composition of atmosphere in little more detail nitrogen is the most plentiful gas in the air when we inhale we take some amount of nitrogen into our lungs and exhale it on the other hand plants need nitrogen for their survival but they cannot take nitrogen directly from the air so how do they take nitrogen bacteria that lives in the soil and roots of some plants take nitrogen from the air and change its form so that plants can use it you can try to see the roots of gram or any pulses see how they look like ask your elders about the swollen portions in the roots of such plants oxygen is the second most plentiful gas in the air humans and animals take oxygen from the air as they breathe green plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis in this way oxygen content in the air remains constant if we cut trees then this balance gets disturbed carbon dioxide is another important gas green plants use carbon dioxide to make their food and release oxygen on the other hand humans or animals release carbon dioxide the amount of carbon dioxide released by humans or animals seems to be equal to the amount used by the plants which make a perfect balance however the balance is upset by burning of fuels such as coal and oil they add billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year as a result the increased volume of carbon dioxide is affecting the earth's weather and climate this was 
अबाउट द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ एटमोस्फेयर और वॉट इज द एटमोस्फेयर कंपोज ऑफ हैव यू एवर थॉट डज द एटमोस्फेयर रिमेन स्टैटिक और इज देर एनी मूवमेंट इन इट वेन एयर इज हीटेड इट एक्सपैंड बिकम्स लाइटर एंड गोज अप कोल्ड एयर इज डेंसर एंड हैवी दैट इज वाई it tends to sink down when hot air rises cold air from surrounding area rushes there to fill in the gap that is how air circulation takes place let us now discuss how is the atmosphere structured or what is the structure of the atmosphere our atmosphere is divided into five layers starting from the earth surface these are troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere we will be knowing about all these layers one by one in details first one is troposphere This layer is the most important layer of the atmosphere. Its average height is 13 kilometers. The air we breathe exists here in the troposphere itself. Almost all the weather phenomena like rainfall, fog and hailstorm occurs in this layer. Second one is stratosphere Above the troposphere lies the stratosphere It extends up to a height of 50 km This layer is almost free from clouds and associated weather phenomenon making conditions most ideal for flying aeroplanes One important feature of stratosphere is that it contains a layer of ozone gas. We have just learned how it protects us from the harmful effect of the sun rays. Mesosphere is the third layer of the atmosphere. It lies above the stratosphere. It extends up to the height of 80 kilometers meteorites burn up in this layer on entering from the space fourth layer is thermosphere in thermosphere temperature rises very rapidly with increasing height ionosphere is a part of this layer it extends between 40 kilometers to 400 km This layer helps in radio transmission In fact radio waves transmitted from the earth are reflected back to the earth by this layer The fifth layer is exosphere It is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere and is known as exosphere This layer has very thin air light gases like helium and hydrogen float into the space from here after having an idea of the atmosphere its composition circulation in it and the structure of atmosphere we will be discussing about some of the important components and aspects of atmosphere Can you make out what is the weather outside at your place? Is it cold and sunny or warm and sunny or cold and cloudy or warm and cloudy? What do you understand by weather? Weather is this hour to hour day to day condition of the atmosphere. A hot or humid weather may make one irritable. a pleasant 
breezy weather may make one cheerful and even plan for an outing weather can change dramatically from day to day however the average weather condition of a place for a longer period of time represents the climate of a place now do you understand why we have daily weather forecast it is the prediction about the short term atmospheric conditions of a place we will be discussing about few important components of atmosphere that determine weather and climate of a place first is the temperature the temperature you feel every day is the temperature of the atmosphere so what is it the degree of hotness and coldness of the air is known as temperature the temperature of the atmosphere changes not only between day and night but also from season to season summers are hotter than winters an important factor that influences the distribution of temperature is insulation insulation is the incoming solar energy intercepted by the earth the amount of insulation decreases from the equator towards the poles therefore the temperature decreases in the same manner now do you understand why poles are covered with snow let us think about a situation what will happen if the earth's temperature rises too high it would become too warm for some crops to grow temperature in cities is much higher than that of villages why because the concrete and metals in buildings and the asphalt of roads get heated up during the day this heat is released during the night also the crowded high rise buildings of the cities trap the warm air and thus raise the temperature of the cities the standard unit of measuring temperature is degree celsius it was invented by anders celsius on the celsius scale the water freezes at 0 degree celsius and boils at 100 degree celsius the instrument used to measure temperature is thermometer another component is the air pressure you will be surprised to know that air above us presses us with a great force on our bodies however we don't feel it why this is because the air presses us from all directions and our body exerts a counter pressure air pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by the weight of air on the earth surface it is measured with the help of an instrument called barometer as we go up the layers of atmosphere the pressure falls rapidly the air pressure is highest at the sea level and decreases with height horizontally the distribution of air pressure is influenced by temperature of air at a given place In areas where temperature is high the air gets heated and rises this creates a low pressure area low pressure is associated with cloudy skies and wet weather in areas having lower temperature the air is cold it is therefore heavy 
heavy air sinks and creates a high pressure area high pressure is associated with clear and sunny skies as against the low pressure areas the air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas yes wind also acts as an important component of weather and climate the movement of air from high pressure area to low pressure area is called wind you can see wind at work isn't it it blows dry leaves down the pavement or uproots trees during a storm sometimes when the wind blows gently you can even see it blowing away smoke or fine dust at times wind can be so strong that it is difficult to walk against it oh oh i'm unable to walk isn't it it feels like this <laughs> You must have experience it is not easy to hold an umbrella on a windy day wind speed and direction can be measured with the help of using wind vane try finding out how does a barometer and a wind vane look like but friends have you ever thought that are winds the same or are of different types winds can be broadly divided into three types one permanent winds what are these these are the trade winds westerlies and easterlies these blow constantly throughout the year in a particular direction second type is seasonal winds These winds change their direction in different seasons. For example, monsoons in India. Monsoons are the monsoon winds. Third type is local winds. These blow only during a particular period of the day or year in a small area. For example, land and sea breeze do you recall the hot and dry local wind of northern plains of india it is called loo moisture can be considered as yet another component of atmosphere when water evaporates from land and different bodies it becomes water vapor moisture in the air at any time is known as humidity when the air is full of water vapor we call it a humid day as the air gets warmer its capacity to hold the water vapor increases and so it becomes more and more humid what happens on a humid day clothes take longer to dry and sweat from our bodies does not evaporate easily making us feel very uncomfortable whereas on a dry day we feel dryness of our skin and it starts looking whitish when the moisture or water vapor present in the atmosphere rises it starts cooling the water vapor condenses causing formation of droplets of water do you know clouds are just masses of such water droplets when these droplets of water become too heavy to float in air then they come down as precipitation precipitation that comes down to the earth in liquid form is called rain 
Rain gauge is the instrument which helps us in measuring the amount of rainfall. Other forms of precipitation are snow, hail and sleet. We all enjoy rains, isn't it? To our surprise, most of the groundwater comes from rainwater itself. Plants on the ground help preserve water. What happens when trees on hillsides are cut? Rainwater flows down the bare mountains and can cause flooding of low-lying areas. On the basis of mechanism, there are three types of rainfall. The convectional rainfall, the orographic rainfall and the cyclonic rainfall. Try finding out how these rainfall types are different from one another. The difference exists in the fact that how these types of rainfalls take place or what is the process behind the cause of rainfall. Rainfall is very important for the survival of plants and animals. It brings fresh water to the earth's surface. If rainfall is less, water scarcity and drought occur. On the other hand, if it is more, floods take place. Friends, in this session we got to know about air, atmosphere, composition of atmosphere, structure of atmosphere and various components that determine weather and climate of a place. I hope you could understand these things properly. In the next sessions, we will be discussing about other topics related to geography. Till then, bye! Friends, you were just listening to the series Dhwani Shala. This series Dhwani Shala was recorded by Bati Langlingdo and Mayank Kumar. Produced by Tanu Gupta. And this program is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.